Hello everybody. I am going to start demonstrating the projects for the Snap Circuits Motion Kit. Project one is color light and the instructions for this project as well as the diagram are right here. I am going to turn on the slide switch and the color LED comes on. It slowly changes colors and then flashes rapidly before slowing down again. It repeats the cycle of changing colors slowly and then quickly. For those who may not know what the color, how the color LED works, if you have not watched demonstrations of projects from other kits, most of which have included a color LED. The color LED actually has three separate LEDs, one that is red, one that is green, and the third that is blue. And they can come on in, at, in different combinations, and the main colors mix to form new ones. And I might be able to tell you more about the colors in later projects. I'm not going to do this for this project, but you can dim the room lights for better effects. You can also replace the color LED with the red, yellow, bicolor LED in either direction. It is yellow when connected like this, and then it is red when connected in the opposite direction. Project two is reversible light. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and nothing happens. Now you will see that the switch on the switcher, which has three positions, is in the center position. When I move the switch away from me, in this case, the bicolor LED will come on and it is red. I'm going to turn off this lamp so that you can see it better. And when I move the switch to the center position, the LED turns off. However, when I move it in the position closest to me, the LED is now yellow. It's as if I rotated the bicolor LED, except I did not actually do so. The bicolor LED actually has two LEDs, one of them yellow and one red and they are connected in opposite directions. Note that normally current can only flow through an LED one way and it is doing so with the bicolor LED but because they are wired in opposite directions no matter what position the whole component is placed electricity will be always flowing through one of the individual LEDs. And if you have watched any of the projects in the Snap Circuits arcade set, which has this exact LED, you will also get to see how it works. And if you've already done so, you'll be familiar with it probably. Now I replace the bicolor LED with the color LED, and because it only works in one direction. In this instance, it will only come on when the switcher is set to the position furthest from me, depending on the position that the color LED is. If I switch it around, then it will only come on when the switch is moved closest to me. And by the way, the pivot stand, this yellow triangular component, has built-in resistors to limit the current flowing through components such as the LEDs. Normally high current will damage an LED, but the LEDs themselves have built-in resistors, I think, so that they will be far less likely to be damaged from overpowering. Now here's a project that is definitely worth viewing in the dark, and that is Light Show. 
I have the light motor, which has LEDs built into one of its blades. And when I turn on the slide switch, look at that spectacular light show. The light motor has a red, a blue, a yellow, a green, and orange LEDs. And they turn on and off at different rates. And when the fan spins extremely fast, the LEDs create a spectacular pattern. I'm going to actually turn off this light as well. Now I'm sorry that my camera picks up the LEDs pretty poorly, but when you view it with your own eyes, it is extremely spectacular. A light show indeed. Be very careful not to touch the motor or fan to avoid personal injury. Project 4's dim light show. I removed one of the battery holders and replaced it with a three snap wire. Now, when I turn on the slide switch, the light show produced by the light motor is not nearly as bright as it is in the previous project because there's only half the amount of energy that is being supplied to the motor. And you, you'll also notice that the blue LED does not come on. That's because it requires the most energy to light. Red LEDs require the least energy, so they will be, typically be the first to come on if you were to gradually apply current to a circuit. Project 5 is pretty interesting. It is called Vibration, Tilt, and Motion Detector. When you first turn on the slide switch, the LED will come on for a little bit. Now, it took some time for it to reset. And then whenever the circuit detects motion, like by waving my hand, vibration, like if I'm shaking the circuit, or by tilting it, the color LED will come on. I don't know if it's going to reset itself so I can tilt it. I will tell you about the individual components that control these things in later projects. This project is very unusual. Project six is dancing ball. I'm going to turn on the slide switch and watch the ball carefully. The ball vibrates, rolls around, and even seems to levitate itself above that funnel. This is an air fountain and it's blowing air out of the funnel and holding the ball up above it. That's pretty incredible. It's possible that the ball might eventually fall off, but if the airflow is steady, it should stay on for a while. It may fall off when I turn off the uh, switch, but it does not. I replaced the three snap wire with the other battery holder, and now the air fountain will receive double the amount of power as in the previous project. And you'll notice that the ball flies up much higher because the force of the air coming out of the funnel of the air fountain is stronger. The airflow is much greater in this project. Now you can try different size balls made from different materials and see how they perform in the airflow. I have a metal ball. Let's see how well that goes. Yeah. That goes. Unfortunately, despite the more powerful airflow, the metal ball is still too heavy to lift off the air funnel. For the next project, I'm going to put my thumb right on the funnel of the air fountain 
And now I don't know if I can do this one-handed, but maybe if I use another finger to restrict the airflow, I might be able to get the ball to still remain levitated above the air fountain. If I did this with two hands, I might be able to do that because I am greatly restricting the amount of air flowing out of the funnel and yet there would still be enough for the ball to levitate at least a little bit above it. I'm going to put the ball on the funnel of the air fountain and move the switcher to the position furthest away from me, the S6 position. The ball will wiggle and roll around and it will levitate above the air fountain. It may become unstable and fall off, but right now it's actually doing a good job. Now it just fell off, but when I move the switcher on the setting closest to me, the airflow is much stronger and the ball will not be able to stay levitated above the funnel. And I'm not going to do this, but I can use other balls and see how they perform with the air fountain. And the air is controlled by a fan blade inside the device and the switcher reverses the direction that the fan spins. The shape of the fan, though, makes the air flow stronger in one direction. 